that brown sheathed low voltage wire from the air handler to the AC unit outside tells the contactor when to engage. This allows the high voltage to pass from one side of the contactor to the other, flowing onto the compressor and the condenser fan motor. Without this low 24 volt communication, the AC won't start. So shouldn't we protect that wire as much as possible from potential damage and UV rays? Isn't it even in an electrical code that we have to use some sort of protective conduit with wiring outside of the house? That's what we're gonna talk about today on Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Now, I've never heard of any low voltage wire that we use in residential heating and air conditioning that is rated for outdoors, including wet and damp conditions. So why when I service equipment and go on HVAC inspections around the Sacramento area, do I find dried up brittle sections of thermostat wire that are simply taped to the suction line from the wall to the AC. I spent hours researching this online and having the hardest time finding in the National or California Electrical Code citing when I need to protect the low voltage wire in outdoor conditions such as the installation of an air conditioner. So if you are aware of the part of the book that talks about this topic, please let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I admit I don't know all the answers, but I'd really like to know if you wouldn't mind sharing. Article 725 of the National Electric Code talks about this type of control wiring. And I can't find one part in there that says class two wire, like the 24 volt thermostat wire we use in residential HVAC, must be protected by or enclosed in conduit. On one side of this conversation, the stat wire isn't rated for outdoor use let alone wet and damp conditions, which I feel leaves it exposed to damaging elements like landscapers who use weed eaters, a dog's incessant need to chew up things in the yard, the ultraviolet rays coming from the sun, and just the arid nature of summer and winter, which dries up just about anything that stays outside long enough. On the other side, installing stat wire inside liquid tight conduit technically doesn't make it a dry environment either. And according to what I've found and not found in my research, a dry environment isn't even needed for class two wiring anyways. But ever since my first HVAC installation, I was required by my foreman to protect the stat wire with half inch seal tight conduit. So I've always taught my techs to do the same. Now it undeniably protects the wire better than just strapping it to the suction line without seal tight and leaving it exposed to the elements. It's also in the best interest of the customer to ensure that the stat wire lasts as long as the AC itself. If the stat wire dries up and becomes brittle, it takes almost nothing, like a bump by the lawnmower, to expose the bare wire within the sheathing and have the wrong wires touch each other. This shorts out the low voltage system, rendering it inoperable. When a low voltage short happens, it usually requires the homeowner to call a service technician to come out and troubleshoot and fix the issue. But it's not in the electrical code books. So when I see a newly built residential neighborhood with exposed stat wire at the AC, I cringe. But I have to remind myself that it's not actually required. If it's not required, why do so many inspectors write up correction letters for us for doing retrofit changeouts and not protecting the stat wire with some sort of conduit? The answer may be, that's just the way we want it. Remember, local jurisdictions can tighten the rules as they deem necessary, and the tightest provision of any code is the one that gets enforced. If you really wanted to push the issue, you could ask the code inspector, nicely, where you could find this source of their local rules. One that lists the requirements which are more restrictive than the National Electric Code. I mean, I get it. There are several sections in the code book that say wiring must be protected from potential damage, but never mentioning it specifically when it comes to class two control wiring. With that said, let's take a look at what it would take to upgrade your customer's low voltage wiring to a more protected state. It doesn't take much work to do, and the cost of the parts are minimal compared to the protection you're giving the stat wire for the future. Taking the old dried up stat wire off the existing suction line insulation and cutting it back to about six inches from the wall will allow you to splice on new wiring to run through the conduit. 
Once it's been wire nutted and taped for protection, leave a little bit of the colored wires so if a future technician comes and has to troubleshoot, they can search back to the splice and easily see the wires that are connected, giving them the possibility of using that third wire as an alternate if needed. Shove the new wire ties into the penetration of the wall where it comes out and slip the new wire through the conduit. Fasten the conduit to the unit and strap it to the rest of the line set and high voltage conduit going to the AC. This makes for a neat and clean workmanship of your repair, which is required by the National Electric Code. So the next time you see exposed thermostat wire coming from the wall to the AC, think about your customer and what's right for them. If you're a homeowner, this job shouldn't be too expensive to have done to your system by your local HVAC company. And as always, whether dealing with a high or low voltage electricity, there are inherent dangers and mechanical failures that can happen when dealing with them. So let's leave it to the professionals. Once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so leave a comment down below. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air, and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.